Hey, I'm Jean. And I'm Kyle. And this is A Different Perspective. On this episode, we'll be talking about taking creative control of your photography and using the exposure triangle to achieve the look that you want. So if you didn't know already, the exposure triangle consists of three main controls, the aperture, the shutter speed, and ISO. So the aperture controls the area over which light can enter your camera. The shutter speed controls the duration of the exposure and the ISO speed controls sensitivity of your camera sensor to a given amount of light. We won't give you all the details, but rather a practical understanding of how each control affects your image. If you want to take a deep dive into the signs of exposure, we put a link in the description to an article from Cambridge in Color. So with aperture, the smaller the number, the wider the opening, and the larger the number, the smaller the opening. With wider apertures, typically 5.6 and below, you're letting in a lot more light to the sensor, and it also decreases your depth of field, which makes the out of focus areas a little more blurry, and that's how people create the cool bokeh effect. A narrower aperture, typically f a and up, will let in less light to your sensor and also increases your depth of field, keeping more of your image in focus. Shutter speed controls how long your sensor will be exposed to the light. This will range between typically 1 8,000th of a second and up to 30 seconds in most cameras. Slower shutter speeds, typically below 1 30th of a second, means letting more light into the camera this can be used for a long exposure effect and it also blurs movement. Faster shutter speeds, typically 1 300th of a second and above, will let less light in and can also freeze motion. Just be aware that slower shutter speeds in handheld situations can also introduce camera shake or blur into your photos. Now with ISO, lower numbers, typically between 100 to 400, will keep your sensor less sensitive to light and help reduce digital noise buildup. A high ISO of 800 and above will increase your sensor's sensitivity to light, but can also increase noise. Another thing to consider is ND filters or neutral density filters. This is another tool that you can use to control that exposure, and this also acts like sunglasses for your lens. It may seem like a lot to learn, but once you understand the exposure triangle, you open up a lot of creative opportunities. We're not trying to say that manual mode is the final frontier of professional photography, but knowing and understanding the fundamentals will set you apart from other photographers and help you achieve your creative vision. So get out and try things for yourself because that's the best way to really learn. And once you learn the rules of exposure, feel free to break them and create something unique. So think of the image that you want in your mind's eye and then go out and capture it. Don't let the camera control you, but you control the camera. So last episode, I challenged us to shoot a long exposure photo. So here's how we went about capturing that photo and our editing process. So for my challenge of long exposure, I had a few ideas in mind in places that I had already been to in Nashville to shoot some long exposure, but I wanted to try something new. And in trying something new, sometimes you get results that you like, sometimes you don't. This was one of those ones where I was kind of in between. The location that I chose was called Sticks, this art piece in downtown Nashville, and it's a sculpture in the middle of the traffic circle. So I wanted to get this sculpture with a long exposure of the lights from the cars or the buses going around this traffic circle. And I also wanted to get some of the skyline or some of these buildings. I wanted to get that within the frame of the photo. So as I said at the beginning of this recording, sometimes you go to a new location, you have this grand idea in mind and you get there and sometimes it doesn't work out exactly as you would expect it to, but that's okay. That's part of this whole entire learning process. This was ultimately not the image that I wanted to capture, but this was the angle I was at when this party bus went by. And even though I'm not getting too much of the skyline back here, you're not seeing too much of the buildings. You see the conference center here and we've got some cool starbursts on the uh, 
lights here. I wanted to ultimately get more of the skyline in the background and I didn't, but that's okay because this challenge was all about long exposure. And I felt out of all the photos that I took, this was highlighting the long exposure uh, streaks of this party bus that went by. So that's ultimately why I went with this photo as opposed to the other one that I took. So this is where we started off. Not that great. Um, I wanted to take the grass out here and I ended up going with a 16 by nine format for the crop. So because of the white balance was so off because of the yellow lights here, I had to cool off the image and push this all the way to 2000. Because if you see, it just really starts introducing a lot of that yellow and orange there. And even though the sky looks a little bit better here, I, I still liked it having that blue tint to it. So that is ultimately what I ended up going with. Uh, for the exposure, I boosted that just so you could see everything pretty well here. I made this a little more contrasty because I like going with you know moody or contrasty photos. That's, that's my favorite style of editing. Boosted the shadows a lot so you could see the details in this stick sculpture. Turned down the whites quite a bit. It, I just thought it helped basically with these light streaks. I boosted the texture, clarity, and dehaze a little bit here uh, just to give it more of that sharpened look. Boosted the vibrance quite a bit so you could really see the color in these light streaks and left the saturation alone because the vibrance handled that pretty well. Uh, gave it your standard S curve here in the tone curve. And then this is basically the only thing I really played around with down here on the HSL sliders. For saturation, I played around with that quite a bit and lowered the saturation of the blues because I had to cool off the photo so much with the color temperature. And then for sharpening, uh, this is actually something that I forgot to do. So we'll do it on the fly here. But I normally like to mask out my sharpening. So it is just sharpening these parts of the frame that I want to sharpen because you don't want to end up sharpening this noise here or the really too much of the texture of the road. So I will bring this all the way up. I won't always do that, but I just mainly want the buildings to be sharpened and also the stick sculpture in the middle. So we'll just do that a little bit and just adjust that. There we go. Now for the color noise, typically because of the camera that I have, which is a Nikon Z6, there is always a lot of color noise when I have a noisier image. So I just make sure that I set that to 50 to take that out. The only other thing that I did to this image was I added a little bit of vignetting. Wanted to take out some of this on the edges there and draw your eyes into the frame. So I felt like negative 15 did it for me there. And that is my editing. All right, for my long exposure, I had a couple different ideas. Originally, I thought it'd be really awesome to get some water. And I think anytime you consider long exposure, water is definitely right up there with your first ideas. And it worked pretty well, but being so high up away from the shore and not really having like waterfalls and stuff, it didn't really scream to me a long exposure. So I uh, tried a few different shots and these turned out actually pretty cool. I was really stoked with them, except for the fact that it just wasn't obviously long exposure, especially for someone who doesn't really know much about photography. They would think it's just kind of a misty beach or a misty shore. Um, it, it was a cool experience for me and I learned a lot just shooting it, but unfortunately I think the nature of that photo didn't really lend itself too well to the long exposure category. So I decided to pivot and I went to a location that is pretty popular up in the Moore Park area. And it's this area called Grimes Canyon and you can get some really awesome long exposures of the cars coming up this curvy bend. All right, so unfortunately, 
55 millimeter lens is not gonna do the trick. I wish I had a wide angle, but it's, like, it's okay. Um, I'm trying to squeeze in as much of the road as possible by kind of putting my camera at this tilt, basically like a Dutch angle to try to snag as much as I can. But it would be awesome if I had a wide just like this or like an ultra wide, kind of like that, so I could get the mountains in the background, maybe like an in-between. But it's okay, we'll get creative and do the best we can with what we have. And as the night went on, uh, the lights got a lot more strong compared to the environment and each shot just got darker and darker and more contrasting, really cool. And I ended up going with a 30 second exposure and I had a big ol' ND filter on there. It was really cool. And uh, the final shot ended up being this one. And it just, it's so vibrant, it's so awesome. Um, real, real quick, here's a before and here's the after. So that's just straight out of camera right there. And I just kind of boosted up the contrast really and uh, did a little bit of color work, but basically I got the perfect shot, just had to wait for the exact moment where a car was coming up and a car was going down, entering the frame at the same time and exiting the frame before it ended. You can see this one ended kind of right here instead of when it went around the corner, but that's about as close as I could get it. It was pretty awesome. So I swapped the profile to Adobe Landscape just because it helps clamp the darks and the highlights and gives a little more boost in color. And then in the light, I really increased the contrast a lot, pulled down the highlights quite a bit so that these light areas weren't blown out. And I brought up the shadows just to kind of lighten the environment some, but I didn't want to go too much so that I exposed a ton of noise grain, but that is kind of what I did with the light. And then I did a little bit of a gamma lift and kept my highlights clamped and boosted the shadows just a little in the curves and that's it for curves. In color, I shifted the white balance a little more cool just to make this white lamp of this car look more blue and contrast the red better. And I boosted the tint just a little bit towards the red side to make the headlamps and the tail lamps a little bit more vibrant. I boosted the vibrance so all the colors would pop a little bit better. And then I took the oranges, you can see with the color mixer here, that is off and that is on. Most of what I did was I shifted the orange to be a little more natural looking and a little more saturated and bright. And then I took the blues and I brought the luminance down because it was headlights versus taillights and that really helped even out the light color. And I saturated that quite a bit and shifted it slightly more towards the reddish purple side. For the effects, I added quite a bit of texture just because I really liked these trees here. I didn't want to overdo it. It's still kind of over sharpened, but I, I kind of like it that way for this particular image. And I popped up the clarity and used a little bit of dehaze to just really make everything seem kind of extra glossy and contrasty. Uh, there is a bit of a vignette and I let the highlights leak through so that I wasn't cutting off any of these bright points on the edges. For the detail, this one uh, is definitely probably over sharpened, but again, for some reason, just the way that it was shot, I think it's fine for that. It's kind of adding a lot of the noise grain in and using the camera's sensor to add the grain instead of adding grain with the effect in Lightroom and did a little bit of masking on that just so that it wasn't overpowering and did a little bit of noise reduction as well just to kind of compensate for it. Uh, might have just gone in circles with this, but I got the result I wanted and that's really all that matters. Again, optics, everything is cleaned up here with the defringe and all that good stuff. And that's it, that's the full picture. Here's a before and after, and that is how I went about shooting my long exposure photo. All right, so it's time to reveal this episode's challenge and it's going to be freeze frame exposure. Whoa. <laughs> so we're flip-flopping from the extreme end of long exposure to now super high shutter speed exposure so that we can kind of show the difference between what a long exposure image would be and what a freeze frame image would be. So it should be obvious, but freeze frame exposure is completely different from the long exposure where instead of trying to show streaks of movement over time, we're trying to freeze a moment into one perfectly sharp image. It could be um, sports or it could be water being flung on something, but it's going to be a completely different outcome, I think. Thanks for watching this episode of A Different Perspective. To join us for this challenge, use hashtag a different perspective TV on Instagram. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you're notified each time we upload and you can be involved in future challenges. See you next time.
That's a tongue twister. Final frontier of professional photography. It's a lot of PHs and Fs. I'm not trying to say that. Uh, <laughs> I'm not trying to say that. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm not trying to say anything. Do we really have anything to say? <laughs>